أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Welcome everyone to to the first session live session of Afghanistan economy one of the subjects in in this semester I welcome you all inshallah in this subject uh, we will study the following topics. We'll have uh, general information about Afghanistan's economy. We'll then go through economic history and background. We'll have a discussion on economic geography, economic performance, national accounts, economic sectors, commerce and trade in Afghanistan, mine and minerals sector in Afghanistan, banking sector in Afghanistan, Afghanistan's fiscal year and taxation, about the commercial law, financial and economic agencies in Afghanistan, Afghanistan's trade agreements and relations with international finance and economic institutions. And <clears throat> we'll have debate on reasons of our economic backwardness, and also uh, national development strat strategy and economic development recovery. These are the key topics that we are going to, inshallah, uh, be talking uh, in this uh, subject in this semester so uh, basically uh, uh, studying this uh, subject uh, what tools or methods or references are going to be used uh, one of the effects that this subject has is, is lack of a reference book that we can follow uh, there isn't any reference book that you can refer to and, and have a further study from that. Uh, basically, we collect the data from uh, different reliable sources, um, and those sources include <coughs> um, the Wikipedia's, the World Bank reports, the UN Annual reports, the Afghanistan uh, government reports, and other uh, national and international research and. Uh, development organizations working in Afghanistan. Basically, the reports and the research papers that they uh, publish, we are going to be using. We have used uh, that information uh, in this um, uh, course. So, um, inshallah, I'll be uploading uh, all the uh, related uh, research researches and reports uh, with each. Uh, lecture or with each chapter to the LMS. Uh, uh, so I'm recording this lecture uh, for you to get the benefit afterwards. Besides the uh, recorded video that I'll be uploading from the YouTube, I'll also upload this uh, uh, live session recorded video uh, to the LMS so you can uh, benefit from both uh, the material uh, in form of reports, in form of uh, class lectures, lecture notes, and also in form of video lectures. Uh, let's talk about the importance of the subject. Uh, being uh, in business, uh, whether you are working in one of the organizations or whether you are leading in one of the organizations or uh, whether you are doing business yourselves or you are a writer or publisher, you need to have economic statistics of Afghanistan. So this subject is going to help you a lot uh, from this part. Uh, it helps you with the interviews and uh, getting a job and, and, and gives you a lot of information uh, with regards to Afghanistan's uh, economy, economic uh, sectors, etc. So this is our first chapter and first lecture. In this lecture, we'll go through these uh, contents. We'll have discussion on the economic overview, then we'll have economic statistics, then we'll have discussion on the current uh, scenario, then we'll have discussion on when the problem started and how Afghanistan is a war-torn economy and how we say that we are rich and what are the new laws that came into existence and what are the hopes 
in the future and how can we reach to those hopes so we'll be discussing all these inshallah in this lecture let me once again remind you this session is going to end maybe at around about 4 30 or <clears throat> 4 35 so when this session ends uh, you have to rejoin means re-log into this session uh, because each session is of 40 minutes so out of those 40 minutes uh, we have already covered 23 minutes so we'll be continuing for 17 more minutes after 17 minutes the session will end and then you have to rejoin because the class continues so let's start with the economic overview <clears throat> afghanistan is uh, having a lot of was having a lot of problem and is uh, having problems um, more than there has been more than mm, five to six decades uh, that there, there are conflicts going on in Afghanistan, but we are gradually recovering from those from those decades of comp conflicts. If you com compare previous two decades with the previous four decades, you will see there is a drastic change in all aspects of the economy, but still the economy is not what it should be or how it should be. Before 2014, the economy had sustained nearly a decade of strong growth, largely because of international assistance. So um, uh, from 2002 till 2013, like um, a, a decade, you can see that there was a great economic boom, and it was due to existence of international forces, international business, and the attention of the international community towards a uh, new Afghanistan. Uh, but after 2014, the economy has slowed down largely because of withdrawal of international community, uh, not only the, the, the defense sector or foreign troops, but also other businesses um, uh, connected to those uh, troops. And the reason is it was an inflated economy. An inflated economy means that it was not a real growth or a real boom. It was just like a balloon. When you blow into a balloon, balloon gets larger and larger. But that is not, that is never permanent. When the air goes out of the balloon, it comes to the the original share which is very small so basically that international money coming into the country was a temporary uh, growth in the country and it's due to lack of proper management of those funds coming into the country and with the withdrawal of those uh, stoppage of those those funds coming into the country the, the economy is now uh, getting its original shape uh, day by day and that's why we see a lot of uh, joblessness uh, low business and other economic activities has slowed down and most of the people they blame the individuals they blame the individuals it's not the individual who are affecting the economy it's the overall effect it's the international effect that is coming into the country, right? So it, it has never been uh, the, the reason uh, of a, an individual. Uh, it's, it's more like an overall effect coming into the country. <clears throat> uh, despite improvements in the life expectancy, income and literacy since 2001, Afghanistan is extremely poor landlocked and highly dependent on the foreign aid like we have multiple problems one of the problem was life expectancy like an average person an average age in other countries and developed countries of the world could be more than a hundred years but here in Afghanistan it's very low it's there are a lot of different reasons it could be uh, like 
one of there are economic factors and non-economic factors the economic factors could be being poor and when you are poor you cannot access the the, the standard uh, uh, health education shelter etc cetera, etc cetera, which leads to towards different disease and all that and due to which uh, a life expectancy rate is lower the non economic uh, factors could be insecurity in uh, in uh, having no peace in the country um, we 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 witness blasts and in attacks terrorist attacks every other day resulting in in, in deaths of uh, tens and hundreds of innocent people in the country so this has also lowered the rate of life expectancy incomes is again as i discussed earlier economic factor literacy is another econo uh, non economic factor and the other problem is that we are landlocked means we are covered by the countries we have no access to seaports direct access to seaports and and railways and all that uh, which benefits a country a lot with uh, respect to economic growth but we are landlocked and we are highly dependent on the foreign aids foreign aids again it's because of uh, having low internal revenue we have no or or low internal revenue uh, because of which we uh, we are supposed to uh, accept foreign aids and, and, and then when foreign aid comes into the country we have to you cannot like uh, strategize those funds in, in, in proper sectors. You have to spend uh, those funds in a way the donors want. So that's another drawback of the foreign aids. Uh, much of the population continues to suffer from shortage of uh, uh, housing, clean water, electricity, and medical care in jobs. These are the biggest problems that we still have. Corruption, insecurity, weak governance lack of infrastructure these are these are the things that and another big problem is uh, rule of law uh, these biggest problems have led government uh, face lots of challenges in the economic growth so and this is the reason that we are considered one of the world's lowest standard country in the world. Again, the international com uh, community remains committed to, to Afghan's development, pledging over at $6.8 billion uh, dollars between 2003 to 2016, which is a huge money coming into the country, out of which uh, around about $30 billion have been spent in the country uh, since 2013 to 2016. The remaining fund was not given to the country because uh, there were no developmental projects and the reason is insecurity. In 2016, uh, once again, the international community promised to support Afghanistan with 3.8 billion of dollars per year for a period of four years from 2017 to 2020, with a total of 15.2 billion dollars. Uh, but this 15.2 billion dollars was uh, never received completely. It's once again because of the the, the, uh, it was not properly spent. This pledge money is uh, not uh, given in cash form to the government. Government has to show uh, plans and those plans, uh, according to the plans and, and budgets of those plans, the money is awarded. So 
as we know that uh, these days the government cannot focus more on the developmental works because of the priorities so they're giving priority uh, they're spending more on 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 the on the security on the on the conflicts like uh, with the with the anti government forces uh, which does not bring any economic activity or development to the country but that's the money uh, which is spent and goes without any benefit so that's why international community uh, is not willing to pay more on the activities which does not bring development to the country uh, that's why we haven't seen the result of those 15.2 billion dollars spent in the country uh, which could be economic development uh, which in fact is uh, uh, there is no like uh, a, a dramatic or uh, a, a an economic development that that could be uh, seen in the country <clears throat> um, this november there was another conference uh, where more than 70 countries ministers participated and the conference was on afghanistan so once again the international community they have uh, pledged over 12 billion dollars of of funds uh, to to assist afghanistan but this time the money is made conditional uh, on the country's commitment to the ongoing peace process like this time they've said that we'll spend this money we'll we'll assist you with this money if uh, you are able to bring peace and sustainability towards the country or in the country so once again this has been made conditional uh, which of course is a big uh, good news that we are pledged with uh, 12 billion dollars which is a huge amount of assistance but the but the but the condition is that if we uh, can bring peace to the country that's why the government of afghanistan is is uh, uh, prioritizing and in, in, in making uh, lots of efforts to towards bringing the peace in the uh, peace in the country and they've they've started their 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 uh, their commitment and, and and their struggles and we have witnessed that uh, like yesterday the day before yesterday there was a uh, a conference in the presidential palace on the peace and that's that's one of the one of the steps that the uh, government of afghanistan is taking to the uh, towards the promise that they have made uh, in the conference in the november 2000, uh, 2020 so this 12 billion dollar is basically uh, a three billion reduction as compared to the to the previous years. Like in from 2017 to 2020, uh, we have been promised uh, with an assistance of 15.2 billion, but this time it's only uh, 12 billion. So there is a reduction of three billion dollars as compared to the previous uh, previous time. So basically, donor nations meet every four years to pledge aid to Afghanistan which is almost entirely reliant on foreign assistance. Once again, the, the foreign assistance, if on one side has benefits, on the other side, it has drawbacks as well. If you want to really uh, grow uh, uh, and be in developed country and want to see economic development, uh, development in the country, uh, the only solution is the internal revenue in the internal revenue is taxes and customs and taxes and customs they relate they have a direct relationship with the economic activity or the businesses in the country and if there is business there will be more taxes if there is no business there will be no tax so and the business has direct relation with the peace and security in the country if there is peace there will be business if there is no peace there will be no business so peace is the first uh, uh, and more most important thing for economic development, right? Uh, you may have heard the story of Hazrat Ibrahim and Hazrat Ismail. 
when Allah ordered Hazrat Ibrahim to leave uh, Hazrat Ismail and his wife in Mecca, uh, so Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was not concerned about the economic condition uh, in that desert, but he was concerned about the security uh, of the Ibrahim and, and his wife, uh, anha. So Prophet Ibrahim made a dua and said, Rabbi ja'al hadha al-balada aminan warzuq ahlahu min al-thamarat. Yani, Prophet Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first mentioned the security, hadha al-balada aminan. Right, so so aman and peace is is the thing that every country uh, needs to have. When there is peace, there is uh, risk, there is activity, economic activity. Everything is everything is normal. So what what need what Afghanistan need is the peace and security. When there is peace, sustainable peace and security within the country, inshallah, everything will settle. Our our internal revenue. Will, will will raise economic activity will be more and every all the problems for example joblessness and in education and health everything will uh, everything everything will get to the standard so <clears throat> Uh, 